Whoa, this is weird. Hey guys, I know this is a bit of a different setup, but it's not a planty video we're doing today for this extra video. I actually just want to talk to you a little bit about my, I'm going to call it my reading experience on holiday and some of the books I read, what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, what I'm reading now and why, and what I'm thinking about reading next. So if that sounds interesting to you, then keep on watching. Quick note before we start, my new merch is actually available on my Teespring, which is linked in the description. Description. I'm not wearing it yet because it hasn't arrived yet, but if you wanted to go and get ahead of the game, you may do that. So it's all in the description and let's get started. I'll chapter this video so you know what book I'm talking about. So if you don't like what I'm talking about, you can skip. But anyway, we're going to get right into it. So I went on holiday recently to Tenerife for one week. And in that time, I've half read, is it like five books? I don't know, but I fully read three books. I'm reading another one now. I'm going to get into it. So I went on holiday. I took two hardback books and one Kindle. Okay. Now these are all, are they all horror? Yes, except for one that I haven't finished, which we'll get into. So we've got basically horror and spice, right? I might actually title the video horror and spice. So I took these on holiday, these two separate books. Okay. These were my hard copies and I did take, this is not mine. This is my girlfriend's. I did take a Kindle on holiday. Now, this Kindle, as you might be able to tell, is actually brand new and it's sage green because my girlfriend's favorite color is sage green. So we went on holiday. We were kind of sharing the books and the Kindle. So this is part of the reason why I've read less books because I only had two hardbacks. So I've bought her this because she loved my Kindle so much. She's actually borrowing it at the minute while this one arrived so I could set this one up for her. So she has my Kindle over in Ireland and I have this that's not set up yet. It didn't occur to me that I could actually use it before she came back. But anyway, uh, if you like this, by the way, this is the, I think it's the newest Kindle Paperwhite, unless they've released another one. I don't know what gen it is. Does it say on the back? No, it doesn't, but it's come in this beautiful sage green color. So that's that. I'm holding it up to basically represent the Kindle, but as you can see, there's nothing on it. So the first thing that I read that arguably is my favorite thing that I read the whole holiday, I thought it'd be good, but I was pleasantly surprised. I read this. I mentioned this in a, would you call it a vlog, whatever, before I went because I just started reading it because I just thought, let's get into reading before I go on holiday, before I get on the plane. Now, this is Through the Eyes of Desperation by Aaron Beauregard and it's known as the red version. I'll get into that later. I've read some of his books before. I've read a lot of his books actually and I really love him. But I'm telling you now, this is an acquired taste and it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. It's in a genre known as splatterpunk, guys, which is essentially extreme horror. So you get a lot of gore and things like that. It's like if you like watching the Saw movies, if you like watching Hostel, you don't mind a bit of, you know, dodgy content in there, then you're probably going to love these. It's not for everybody. It's not actually necessarily the type of movie I like to watch, but there's always a few that sort of break that barrier for me. But anyway, I wanted to read him because I loved him. This book, what is it about? So it's called Through the Eyes of Desperation, the Red Version, and you follow the main character, which I think his name is Patrick, but he's not really referred to as Patrick for the rest of the book. Let me just check. Yes, Patrick. Blanchfield. So he's referred to as Red throughout the whole book, hence the Red version. This is because I think he developed the name because he has a port wine stain birthmark on his neck. So the premise of the book is he has, without giving spoilers, obviously these are spoiler free, he gets into a bit of a situation. He owes a lot of people a lot of money and they're not very nice people. They are like breaking bad, nasty, nasty, nasty types of people. Okay. And it finally catches up with him, this, the, the gap. I guess get in touch with them and they're like right you pay us the money back I think it's in something like they give him like three days or something so effectively the weekend very nice of them to pay them back he is forced to go to an underground casino known as Shadows I think let me check it's not the Shadows it's Shadows yes Shadows in this underground casino he must gamble to win the money back so he has to gamble with everything he has i.e. himself, his self-respect, possibly even body parts, you name it, it's up for grabs. So we follow Red through this, I would almost describe it as like a casino gauntlet of trying to win the money in order to pay these guys off because if he doesn't pay them, it's not just him that suffers, it's his mum, his mother, his mom or whatever that suffers because the, the rest, or I think two of the gang members are actually sat in Red's apartment looking after 
over his mother and waiting to see if he comes back on time. And they've made a very horrendous threat towards his mother if he doesn't. So he does have some motivation other than himself. We delve back into his past because he's been paying a private investigator to find his long lost daughter. That's also part of the reason as to why he's out of money because he's basically stolen money from this gang in order to do this. So I guess it was for a good cause. But anyway, he goes through this absolute gauntlet that is the casino. He meets people on the way. It's so interesting. I can't even tell you. I can't give you too much about the book, but there are different places in the casino, different themed areas. You go in and you read about this environment and you think, oh my God, this is the worst place ever. And it turns out that's just like easy mode when you go in and it's not even high stakes. It's just horrible, vile, disgusting games being played and lost. And you think, oh my God, okay, what could possibly be worse? And it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. It is absolutely insane. The thing I love about Aaron's writing is that and I, I asked my girlfriend about this as well because she's also read this. She's read a couple of others that I'm going to talk about. There's something about Aaron's writing whereby you can smell stuff and you can taste stuff reading it, okay? I read this on the plane on the way out. Obviously, I finished it on holiday. I mentioned in an older video, I don't have it with me, when I read Aaron Beauregard's Playground that I was reading it on the plane for the first time, like literally like this, because I had someone next to me and I didn't want to see, you know, I didn't want them to see what I was reading. I did the same thing with this. I did the same thing with this very early on. I think my girlfriend was like half asleep on the plane and I literally opened it at a page and went read that. And she was like, what the hell did I just read? So absolutely loved it. The cool, unique thing about this book is it's called the red version, by the way. There is another version by another author, I think. It's Daniel Volpe. I can't remember, but it's the black version and it, it covers the story of someone else in this uh, universe or whatever. The cool thing about this book is it gets to a certain point in the book where it's all coming to this massive, you know, point of climax. And you get a little page in the book. I don't know where it is. I don't know if I'm going to find it from flicking. Give me one minute, see if I can. It says the gamble, right? And it literally says, hello, dear reader. At this moment, we ask you to locate a coin before continuing. If you're reading from the limited edition, blah, 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 blah. There are two different potential conclusions to this story and are both now in your hands. Designate each of the heads and tails on your side of your coin as either red or black. Those using a chip, blah, 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 blah. Once you flip the coin, determine what color it has landed on. Use the below guide to flick to the page for the ending. I read both endings. I believe I got the good ending anyway, but there was no, you know, no way I wasn't going to go back. But it was really cool because by the time I got to this point in the book, I really felt invested. And it's like, I was reading about all this horrible stuff that was happening and I was rooting for the main character. But at some point I didn't expect it. It just turned it all on me. And I was like, <gasps> and at one moment I actually felt the weight of everything that had happened in the book and what I want, you know, I wanted, you know, Red to, you know, the main character to succeed or whatever. So it actually really hit me quite hard when I was reading it on a sun lounger. And I think that's brilliant. So this book, I gave it five stars on Goodreads because it's so good. It's actually so far my favorite Aaron Beauregard book. Absolutely amazing. Again, not for everybody. Look at Goodreads. I will put the links to all these in the description if you just want to do a quick click. It's not for everybody. But if you like Saw, you like Hostel, you like, as a movie I, I compared this to a while ago, it's called Would You Rather. It's, you know, it's like a mix of all of those things. If you think you'd like it, go for it. If you don't mind being shocked, go for it. This probably has trigger warnings, the house, right? The house. Just every trigger warning, probably, it probably has. But completely recommend it. One of my favorites. Anyway, moving on. I will talk about another one of his books, even though I don't have it here because I did read this on the Kindle before we move on to some of the other stuff. So I also read, oh, got fluff on my nose, how dare it. I also read Erin Beauregard's Wedding Day Massacre, which did actually surprise me a little bit when I was reading it. So you follow, I can't remember her name and I can't look it up right now. You follow, basically the concept is this bride is marrying this groom. This groom seems to be an everyday Joe. You know, maybe he's a bit overweight. There's nothing really special about him. I presume he has some money from what I remember. And you get basically informed very quickly by, by many different devices that she's basically a sociopath. And she has invited all manner of people to this wedding because her whole goal is to marry this guy and basically take his money. And I think I read that she was going to try and fake like a DV situation or something like that. And the book gives you some backstory, gives you some backstory on the characters. And it's all about the wedding day, not the ceremony, like the wedding dinner afterwards. And you read about some of the people she's invited to the wedding. For example, 
example, she invites basically all the guys that she's been cheating on the groom with behind his back and they're all like big muscly dudes and they're like gym bros and they're all sat around a table. There's a few different people that she invites and different reasons and stuff like that. And it all changes. And I mean, you can see from the title that, you know, something is going to happen. I don't want to tell you what goes on because I, I think it's like a cool point in the book that I wouldn't want to ruin. But there is a character in this book that actually reminds me, if you're into it, of Art the Clown from Terrifier. It's a little clown called Jinx or Mime, you could say. Um, very reminiscent of Art from Terrifier. So that was really cool. I think I gave it four stars just because this book here had like a very good arc to it, like a little bit more... Um, I don't know, like a more of a story arc, more character development, I would say. Like you were really rooting for, you know, this person. In Wedding Day Massacre, you weren't necessarily rooting for anyone. You were just sort of like just in for the ride and you were just hit with all this stuff kind of thing. So it was entertaining, but in a completely different way. So I think I gave that four stars, but it was very, very good. And as I say, it's on Kindle, so I can't show you. But obviously I've put a picture up on the screen or whatever of what it is. Again, same author. Right, the next book I read, No More Aaron Beauregard. Really sad, really sad. Oh, I actually, I spoke to him. Funny enough, I spoke to him on Instagram a couple of days ago now. I've had a bit of a chat with him. And I actually said like, what should I read next based on what I've read? So he's given me a couple of books to read. I'm waiting for my Kindle to come back, I think, so I can get them. Um, I'll just do the Kindle versions. So I will probably be checking in at some point in the next few weeks with more that I've read from him. I've also ordered one of his older books, I think, off... It wasn't Amazon, it was a different website. I think it was Awesome Books and it's called Modern Hysteria, which looks like a really interesting premise, um, especially in terms of like, not current events, but like the, the, I don't know, like the climate we're in or whatever, I don't know. Um, so anyway, I will get back to you on that. The next book, this book. This book has been on so many like horror recommendation lists and all the rest. Sorry, this is really distracting me because I think I should be a bit lower. Is that better? Yeah, that's much better. Sorry, guys. Right, anyway. So this book has been on a lot of, you know, read this if you're into horror, blah, blah, blah. It's really scary, blah, blah, blah. And I read it and I think I gave it... I don't know what I gave it. Two minutes, guys. I will find out what I gave this on my Goodreads. I, th I don't know if I gave it four stars, but obviously my actual rating is three and a half. Give me one moment. Uh, I gave it three, but I think I'm probably teetering between three and 3.5. Um, Amber felt the same when she read it because she's also read this. She also read Wedding Day Massacre, by the way, as well as the first book. Um, I think her opinion was maybe the same as me. Um, her opinion on this was probably lower than my opinion on this. So this is Home Before Dark by Riley Sega, I think is how you pronounce it, which I think the author is male. And this book is about Maggie Holt, who has basically inherited a house that her and her family lived in when she was younger, but she can't remember anything about her. Now her father, her late father that's given her this house, her mum and her dad are, well, her mum is alive and her dad left her this house in the will. Now her dad wrote a horror novel about the house and basically she has always maintained, I don't remember any of that, it's not real, it was all made up, blah, 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 blah. So she goes back to this house because she, her job is to basically renovate houses and sell them. So she's like, right, I'm just going to renovate and sell it. So she goes back and basically I do like the way this book is laid out for us because we get like a chapter of the dad's book and then we get a chapter of her experience and they're lining up really, really nicely, which is, it was a really nice way of like giving context to what was going on, what, you know, Maggie is experiencing and then what actually happened way back in the day. This book did not go where I thought it would go. I can't, say too much obviously because it will be a spoiler if you've read it you know what I mean I I don't know I just feel like it's not how do I do this uh, given spoilers can you tell I don't do these types of videos I I signed up for more of a ghost story and for me it wasn't um and I, I don't know how to think about it the twist it, could you call it a twist not sure not not really it didn't really grab me it was okay like I, I totally don't regret reading it I think it's a half decent book I think you would be entertained by it for sure I certainly wouldn't suggest don't read it but I don't think I came away thinking like oh my god great um I'm still looking for a horror book that will actually either scare me or just give me a mind-blowingly good story and for me this was not it now I've heard a few people talk about 
about Riley Sager and they always say the first book you read is probably going to be the favourite. I'm guessing that means that their writing throughout different stories changes a lot. But I didn't really appreciate this one, so I'm probably not in any rush to try a different book. So, eh. Yeah, I gave it three stars on Goodreads. I don't recommend not reading it. I just, it really depends what you want out of a horror book. For me, this was not it. It was not it. I signed up because I thought it was going to be like a really good haunted house story. So anyway, the other book I read. Okay, so this was, th there's a few reasons why this might have failed for me. I will go into it, but I, I deviated a bit from horror for a little bit because I thought let's just see if I can get out of the horror train because I'm out on a sun lounger let's just see because I it was after this book okay so I tried where is that it is this is this is a spicy one um apparently uh, this is called those who wait by Haley Cass and it follows the lives of I can't remember the surnames Charlotte and Sutton Sutton is in university I think she's studying English literature Charlotte is like an aspiring politician or she is a politician really and I think Charlotte is older and it's a story of basically Sutton is she seems to me like a bit of a Bella Swan character I don't know if that's reductive or not but she is sat in her apartment one day. It's where I've got cat hair all over my nose, guys. She sat in her apartment one day and her roommate slash best friend takes her phone and like signs her up to a dating site, website or whatever and messages, swipes on Charlotte or whatever. Messages saying, hi, do you want to hook up? I think she takes the phone back and she like apologises for her friend. We've probably already all been there. I know I have in the past. I know I have in the past. But anyway, they get talking. Sutton's like, I don't want to hook up or anything. I think Sutton's very recently come out as bisexual. So basically they form a friendship but then it's not quite a friendship and then they get closer and all, all the things. But I just felt, and I've not finished this, I don't know how far I'm into the book because it's on Kindle and Amber has it, but I'm a good 30 odd percent maybe 40% through the book and I think it's a 600 page book so I've read I've read quite a bit and I'm just finding it so slow so slow and a bit needlessly slow I know that you know it's a bit sapphic so you want more kind of lead up and stuff like that but I just just found it a bit slow and I feel like for a spicy book that there has to be better out there than that not that I was like hell bent on reading something spicy but you get my point so I just didn't I didn't vibe guys now I tried the audiobook version while I was on holiday because it was free and it it, it was arguably worse because then the pace slowed down because obviously the narrator's slower. So I was just like, okay, I'm not, I'm not vibing. So it's probably going to be a DNF unless somebody has read it and they tell me, no, no, keep going. It's worth it. It's worth it. I'm probably not going to pick it up again. I've tried it on audiobook. I've tried it on book and I just... I don't know, maybe it's the time of year. I just think personally I could probably find something with a little bit more pace and arguably a bit spicier, to be honest. Arguably a bit spicier. So after that, I got home. Although I didn't get home. I started, I'll tell you about this. I started this on audiobook because I knew I had it on Kindle, but I'm on holiday and I'm not using the Kindle. So I started on audiobook on the way back home and I've started basically, well, I've continued to read on the way back home. Now, I've mentioned I've read this before. It's it's a half-truth because I've read maybe two-thirds of it about four times. So something special about me in this book, every time I try and read it, something in life happens and I don't stop reading the book, I just stop reading generally. By the time I come back to it, I've forgotten it. So I'm starting to read this again, but I remember reading this and finding it creepy. So this is Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. Joe Hill, guys, is Stephen King's son. So if you're a Stephen King fan, I strongly urge you to actually try Joe Hill. Ironically, I've never read Stephen King. I know, hilarious. But the thing about this and this, this Riley Sager book, Joe Hill generally is a writer, in my opinion, apparently writes like his dad. I wouldn't know because obviously I haven't read Stephen King. This had opportunities to do scary moments in this book, right? It really did. But it was over in like five lines. Five lines, literally. And I even stopped midway through it. I think Amber was next to me sunbathing and I, I said like, check this out. The scary stuff happening and it's taken five lines and it's gone. She was like, yeah, I know I noticed. Now, Joe Hill doesn't do that. Joe Hill really builds up the atmosphere and he keeps it borderline throughout the book and he gives you like a low atmosphere. And then obviously when he describes things, he doesn't need to say too much, but it comes across very, very creepy. So, so far I'm enjoying this, even though I have sort of read like a third through it, two thirds through it many times. So we follow a, 
50 odd year old rock star called Judas Coyne, who is at the moment going out with his girlfriend, who I think is a stripper called, is it Mary, Mary, Mary Beth? Can't remember, but he refers to her as Georgia because that's where she's from. So he's had a string of girlfriends and he doesn't really call them by their names. I know guys, I know. He calls them from where they're from. So that's what that is. And basically Jude is probably how I would potentially be if I had a lot of money. He buys weird shit off the internet, right? He buys haunted stuff, weird stuff, like some guy that was hung in 1832 or something, he, like some notorious serial killer, and he would buy the noose from that. So it's a bit like collecting really weird memorabilia. He has a bunch of stuff, and then one day there is a suit, a haunted suit listed on probably the equivalent of eBay, basically. And he's like, wow, I could buy a ghost, this is cool. So he buys it, and all hell breaks loose. So he gets this suit in a box with the black heart-shaped box, hence the name, and all hell breaks loose. He becomes haunted by this horrific, horrific old man. And honestly, it's really quite creepy to read. I wouldn't say it was scary, but it's very, very, ugh, you know? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not easily scared. Fair enough. Someone else might find this, like, horrific to read. I don't know. I've got a very high tolerance for this stuff because I've been basically raised on horror. But it's very, very creepy. Again, I can't give too much away because one, I haven't finished it. Two, want you to read it. But I do actually recommend this even though I've not read through it because I've tried to read it a few times. So that's that. Right, let's check my Goodreads because I'm aware that that was mainly horror apart from one spice. If you've got any good spice that is arguably sapphic, because I'm not really interested in it if it's not sapphic, um, let me know in the comments if you think, oh, okay, this is spicy, but it's got some meat to it and it's got some pace to it because Jesus Christ. Want to read? I've put a few on my list. One of them is Through the Eyes of Desperation, the black version, and it is by Daniel J. Volt. So that's gone on the list. So at some point I want to read that. Another one that I'm seeing a lot of people read, I don't know how good it is, is called Incidents Around the House. And I think, is it about, there is a eight-year-old girl, it centers on this eight-year-old girl that has, you know, her mum and her grandmother, but there is also other mummy. And it's a malevolent entity, apparently. And basically, there is a lot of incidents around the house. And it says, other mummy is growing tired of asking Bella the same question over and over. Bella understands that unless she says yes, soon her family must pay. Other mummy is getting restless, stronger, bolder. Only the bonds of family keep Bella safe. But other incidents show cracks in her parents' marriage. Safety Bella relies on is on the brink of unraveling. But other mummy's an answer. So it strikes me a little bit like, if you've seen the, the horror movie Mama, it strikes me as like that. I'm not saying it is. I haven't read it, fairs, um, but that's what that strikes me as. But a lot of people seem to be reading it, so I put it on my Goodreads. I also have Head Full of Ghosts that I think Amber read that I did not get to read because it was on the Kindle by Paul Tremblay. Apparently that's really cool. What is the name of the... Marjorie? Yeah, Marjorie is the name of the girl in it. So I'm skimming this for the sake of the video. And I think basically the whole book is basically does she have schizophrenia or is she possessed and there is a reality tv element that comes in i think it films in the house or something the family agrees to be filmed and soon finds themselves the unwitting stars of the possession a hit reality television show when the events in the barrett household explode in tragedy the show and the shocking incidents it captures become the stuff of urban legend so apparently it's really good and apparently the reality tv aspect is good so that's another one on my goodreads i'll not go through them all obviously because we will wait to see what happens when i've read some uh, there was one other that I saw on another YouTuber's video recently, and it's called Where I End by Sophie White. And it seems really weird. I think it's set in like rural Ireland. Um, says my mother. At night, my mother creaks. The house creaks along with her. Through our thin shared wall, I can hear the makings of my mother gurgle through her body, just like the water in the walls of the house. I'll leave it at that. It sounds very, very interesting. So I will probably be reading that. It's got some decent reviews. It's not rated. Oh no, it is rated well. It's rated 4.3, 4.03, I should say, on Goodreads. So yes, those are the books I've read. Those are the books I should be continuing to read. Obviously I have some coming in the post. I need to sort this out for Amber and then I get my Kindle back. I'm very jealous because this is gorgeous, by the way. It's so pretty. I know there's a newer, or there might be a newer paper white out actually, and it's 
it's it the green extends around here looks horrible looks horrible should be this this looks way better and it looks more sleeker but anyway guys thank you very much for watching this i know it's a bit garbled i'm not used to talking about books so there you are and they are definitely spooky books there's, there's like a, a salt bay peppering of spice on there but i hope you enjoyed it anyway i've left links to all of the goodreads links for all these books if you'd like to have a look at them and i guess that's it i will do more of these in the future but they'll be very like chill and sort of ad hoc because I don't know how often I'm going to be able to read and stuff like that but more than happy to do some of these if you have any recommendations for me please let me know at the moment I'm into my horror I'm not gonna lie I'm into my horror I do like disturbing stuff I do like um I mean I probably don't read a ton of gory stuff I don't mind haunted house stuff providing it's done really well and it's not corny so yeah let me know in the comments thank you very much for watching this extra video and I will see you very soon bye guys